All right, what's up, YouTube? Yo, check this guy. You welcome to another episode of Tech Talk. We are on episode three. Today's episode is going to be called "I Spent the Week Without My iPhone." Yes. Now, if you follow my previous Tech Talk episode, um, you probably heard me stating that I was going to make this episode a CES 2015 recap. Um, but I decided, um, looking over my channel, I, I want to keep my Tech Talk episodes or yeah, my tech talk episodes. I want to basically keep them like a video podcast, essentially. Essentially, um, I want to use this tech talk on the first and the sixteenth to basically speak my opinion about tech in a longer format. Sometimes it can be over just one topic. Sometimes it might be several, but basically, I wanted to use this episodes, this this section, as a place where I can speak about tech freely, giving my raw opinion, um, in a long format. And basically, this is a way for the audience or whatever to get to know me and my personality better when it comes to tech and just how I think on something. So that's what, from going forward, uh, what Tech Talk is going to be about. Basically, essentially, it's a video podcast on different tech topics with my opinion. And um, that's how we're going to keep it. All the other videos will be featuring. I'm still going to do a CES recap video, of course, and I got a bunch of other little smaller videos that um, I want to do. That was a result of CES, so all those are still going to come. And you know, videos are just going to be its own thing. I'm going to have Tech Talk as my video podcast, and I got a new thing that I'm doing called a uh, Tech in 60 Seconds, which I'll speak about that more at the end of this video. So let's get into Tech Talk episode eight. I spent the week without my iPhone. So for a few years now, I've been walking around with two phones, an iPhone and an Android phone, and sometimes three as I will also have my Windows phone too, but I mostly kept it down to two phones. So this year when I decided to go to CES, um, I made a very, very last minute decision to leave my iPhone at home, and I mean very, very last minute. I was going to walk out the door, um, grab my bags, and I decided, you know what, I'm going to leave my iPhone at home and opt to carry just one phone. The main reason I did this was, for one, it would be one less thing I have to carry and one less uh, electronic I have to worry about. Um, the other reason is, it was it, it's not activated anymore as I have decided to cut back on um, some of my expenses because uh, I'm trying to move. So I decided to try to cut back So I'm trying to do a cross-country move. And, um, I mean, one line is enough. I had like four, so... I really cut back. So that phone is currently not activated right now. So I was like, it's not activated right now. It's one less thing I have to worry about. You know, let's see if I can make it without my iPhone on a, on a week-long vacation trip. So what's the iPhone? I mean, what's the iPhone? What's the phone that took my iPhone 6's place? Of course, it was the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. I mean, <laughs> got to be something top-notch, of course. Um, now, the last time I carried an Android phone as my primary phone, and when I say primary phone, I'm meaning um, the phone that has my my main number on it. Um, when I consider my main number, it's the number all my family has and the number that I give to jobs and doctors and anybody else that's important to need my number. That's when I consider primary. Um... The last time I had an Android phone with my primary number on it was back when I had the Galaxy Note 2. As far as I can remember. I had a lot of phones in between then. But I think it was back when I had the Galaxy Note 2. Um, was the last time I had an Android as my primary phone. And I really, really loved my Note 2. But usually when I was having two phones, my iPhone would always have my main number on it. And then whatever the, my secondary phone was, which usually turned out to be an Android. In some cases, it was a Windows phone. Um, I would use, I would have, a, I would use my second number basically, basically as my credit to the seller number, uh, just so I can, you know, actively use the phone instead of just using it for data only, basically. So, why did I need to have two phones? I got three reasons. Hear me out. Number one, I like the different operating system for different reasons. Like, I like Android for the widgets and being able to fully customize the phone pretty much however I like if I really want you know to go that far and then I like iOS for just being simple sometimes you know simple is good number two there are apps on iOS that are not on Android and vice versa now 
to some people this will not be a big deal but i've been invested in both ecosystems for a while now especially ios and you know it's it's to the point where i have certain apps that i really enjoy on ios or on android that are not on the other platform and i've tried finding an app that's similar you know close enough to it but it always just always has like a feature or two missing that just you know doesn't make it quite like the original app that i like so that's another reason I like the have the two different phones i've never i've never carried two of the same operating systems as two phones that just doesn't make any sense to me like I, i've never carried two android phones or two iphones that just doesn't make any sense if you're going to carry two different phones or three different phones i personally feel they should all be different operating systems but that's just me that that's what makes the most sense number three why do I need to carry two phones? It keeps me from getting bored. Like, in the past when I tried to just carry only an iPhone, I would get bored um, pretty quickly. And that was probably due to the lack of being able to customize. And then when I would have just an Android phone, I missed the idea of having iOS. I didn't get bored as quickly as I did with my Android phone. Because, you know, you got widgets. You can always swap widgets around. You know, just move apps around. Just do different stuff. But... I still end up missing iOS, so either way, if I would just have one, I I, I tend to get bored um, sometimes. With the note, with the note series, it's a little more harder to get bored as quickly. Definitely more hard to get bored when you got the note. So the note is in like kind of like its own class from Android. When it comes to the note, I definitely don't get as bored as quickly as if I was just to have a regular Android phone. Let's say that. So. I would say during my week um, stay in Las Vegas for CES, um, having my Samsung Galaxy Note phone, it had its pros and it had its cons. So let's talk about the pros. Number one, the large screen. Um, now, one of the reasons I ended up getting rid of my Galaxy Note 4 as my main phone in the past was because the screen was so massive and it got tiring carrying around such a large phone while out and about. And, um, you know, the Note doesn't necessarily fit well in a pocket. So... That was one of the reasons why I had got rid of my Note 2 in the past after having it for, you know, several months. Um, but um, while in Vegas, having access to a phone with a, with a large screen was great um, because I needed all that screen real estate for everything I was doing. The features I was mostly using during this particular trip was Google Maps for navigation, looking up stuff on the Internet and taking pictures. And then there was a few times where I actually needed to use my S Pen with S Note and drop down something really quickly while I was on the conference floor where um I didn't have I had access to pen and paper but not easy access. Basically it would retire me to take off my backpack, open the zip, open you know, open the backpack, get the pen and paper out. You know, about the four or five steps versus just pulling my Galaxy Note out of my pocket, taking out the pen and writing. So I really, really appreciate that um on the notes. That's one of my reasons why I really love the note is because of the S pen. Now, my Note 4 came in handy for all those things. Could I have done all those things on my iPhone 6? Yes. However, it might not have been a great experience when it came to the internet browsing because with it, the iPhone 6 being on a smaller screen, I would have to pinch the zoom a lot to see the content better where it's on the Note 4. Uh, for the most part, it was at a pretty good size where I didn't have to pinch the zoom. Only a few times I needed to pinch the zoom. But um, I was pretty much good with how it was. Now, say if I was to have an iPhone 6 Plus, which I don't, I have the iPhone 6, that that whole spiel I just spilled said right now was pretty much eliminated because that would be equal. The browsing experience should be equal um, due to both the Note 4 and the iPhone 6 having large, uh, similar size screens. The other pro, multitasking. And I'm not talking about the multi one tool, the multi one tool, yeah, the multi one tool feature on the Note 4. Um, which I actually totally forgot about until I was preparing for this video. I'm just talking about this hitting the recent task button that's on all the Android phones. I've always, I just prefer the Android multitasking over um, iOS way, which is kind of weird because iOS basically stole their multitasking way from um, WebOS with how they used to do it on Palm Pre and Palm Pixie. And I loved my Palm Pre. really loved that phone. Um, and I enjoy it everything about the palm pre i just i don't know i just don't like the way ios does it even though it does it the same way it's just different i guess probably it's just different it's the best way i could put it it's just different um 
So I definitely enjoy the way Android does it. I would say, as far as, because some phones do it different with the recent tests, pretty much all I'm probably going to be doing the same now in that card, that card stack feature that, uh, that KitKat does now. I really used to enjoy the way uh, HTC Sense did it when they had it. But they gave you like the last nine things that you're working on and basically had a had each of them had its own little section. You just can click on it really quick. That was my favorite of the recent test button. But I, I like this little car style, roller deck style that um that uh that's in KitKat right now as far as for the recent tab. So I, I do prefer that over iOS. And I was doing a lot, hitting the recent test button a lot um, because I was getting addresses off the internet, putting them in Google Maps. So I was trying to snap a picture and then go back to Maps or go back to the internet. So I was doing a lot of back and forth and uh, that that did well with that. So for the most part, I enjoy having my Note 4 on this trip. Now, of course, we have to speak about the cons and where I kind of wish I had my iPhone 6. So first thing, freeze ups. Now. I'm going to admit, I was taking my Galaxy Note 4 to the limit during this trick with all the back and forth I was doing in a short amount of time. Now, I was not clearing out the RAM, so I was using just like a regular person because like a regular consumer, you're just trying to get the phone to do what you need to do. You're not worrying about clearing out the RAM. But there were a few times where I had some freeze-ups, and if you had Samsung products in the past, especially Samsung phones, you know, freeze-ups, it's not something that's going to be new to you or unexpected, like... Freeze ups used to happen all the time because of touch with It's one of the reasons why some people just hate touch with is because of all the freeze ups and things like that. Now, I would definitely say, because I've had a lot of Samsung phones all the way back to the original Samsung Galaxy phone, the freeze ups are definitely not as bad as the previous versions. I would say my longest freeze up held me up for maybe 20 seconds if I was guessing. I wasn't counting, but if I thought about it, if I was guessing, I would say maybe 20 seconds at the longest. Um, basically doing these freeze ups, my phone would either, if I remember correctly, it would either go, um, back and forth between, like, apps and it basically not go to the app I wanted to go to, or, um, doing, like, a horrible freeze up, it would not respond to any touch at all, like, it won't let me close it out, it won't, none of the touch capacitor buttons will work, home button, nothing will work for about, like I said, 20 seconds at the longest, and then everything will start back working. At no point in time did I have to take out the battery or restart my phone. So, in that regard, I'm happy with that. Um, that's why I say the freeze-up is definitely not as bad as it used to be with previous Samsung phone models. But, you know, I would prefer I didn't have to. I would prefer that my Note 4 just was just stopped being totally unresponsive to my touch and me having to wait. That can be kind of frustrating sometimes, but, you know, like I said, it fixed itself pretty quickly. I know 20 seconds, some people might be extremely long, but um, it fixes itself pretty quickly. As long as I didn't have to waste time taking out the battery and restarting and rebooting, that can be annoying and a hassle. Now, the other con, which is kind of a big deal, kind of not, but really kind of a big deal, the camera. Now, if you follow my TikTok episodes, you might remember me saying that I prefer Samsung Galaxy cameras over the iPhone cameras sometimes. And I mentioned that I think it probably had something to do with the bigger HD AMOLED screens. Which makes sense because, you know, you're looking at a bigger screen, gives you the illusion, better picture, you know, same thing. Bigger screen, better quality screen, things like that. Um, Not saying that... Not not saying that the quality of the screen is any better than the iPhone. That's not what I'm saying. But you get what I'm saying. Now, I do enjoy taking pictures with my Note 4. I'm not, I'm not, I do enjoy taking pictures with my Note 4. It's one of the reasons I want to take it out of town when I went on my cruise. Because I love the, how the pictures take really good outdoors and in well-lit areas. However, when it comes to indoor, low light, such as taking pictures at nighttime or taking a picture quickly, I miss my iPhone 6. And I would say those are those are three things that the iPhone 6 camera does better over Samsung and every other camera, pretty much. Um, now, of course, you know, and of course, iPhone takes great pictures outdoors and well lit areas also. But um, one of the examples, uh, one of the things, for example, that I could get my iPhone to do, I mean, that my iPhone does that I couldn't get my Note 4 to do to my liking. Was when it comes to touching the area on the picture and the brightness adjusting to the way I want it to. So I'm not saying that the Note 4 doesn't do that. I'm saying adjusting to the way I want it to. How does it? So 
Let me give you an example. So, you know, in Vegas, even if you've never been there, you know, bright lights, strip, bright lights, hotels, bright lights, whatever. So, think of it's nighttime. Trying to get a night shower with a hotel that has bright lights on it. So, you touch the light. I'm touching the lights on the hotel so I can make the background as dark as possible. Basically, bring out the lights of the hotel and take a beautiful, vivid looking picture. iPhone does this pretty much how I wanted to do it. The Note 4, however, instead of responding and making the background darker, it made the picture look faded, if you know what I mean. It it made it look, um, you know how sometimes you take pictures and it has that faded, cloudy look? It, it did that. So, that was one of the most, that was, that was kind of annoying, just because I like taking dark pictures uh night shot pictures because they just look so good especially when you somewhere where you're taking pictures with a lot of light you want to get that shot so the note for making night pictures faded and cloudy looking just you know wasn't to my liking um besides that when it came to taking a quick photo um at the spur of the moment my iphone does this pretty well and um, when I say it does it pretty well, it does a pretty good job as far as getting the picture, everything being in focus and not the picture and the picture not being blurry when it goes time to review the pic. I noticed when I tried to do quick pictures with my Galaxy Note 4, it would sometimes take a while for the shutter to actually snap. Like it was times where there was actually like probably like a three second delay. Now, this can be very annoying when you're trying to snap a picture really quick and keep on the move especially when you're at um a convention or something like ces where so much stuff to see and you're just trying to you know you're trying to walk through really quick but you see something really quick um that you want to take a picture of so you can review later or you know jog your memory later but you you know you're also trying to be on the move so that's what i was trying to do with my note for because I, I do it with my iphone all the time and um i would take the picture i take the picture with my note for and i was just noticing that it was just not the shutter, I would push the button, but the sh- it didn't actually take the picture to like three seconds later. And this happened multiple times, several times. It's not like it just happened, oh, a couple of times. That wouldn't have been a big deal. It happened several times. And, you know, I would say maybe probably, you know, clearing out the RAM or things like that could maybe have an effect on it. But I don't, I don't, I never clear out the RAM on my iPhone either. Like, I hardly ever go back and actually you know swipe up the all the windows i have open um i hardly ever even power my phones off and even if you power your phones off um for people that think that can wipe out your all your recent tasks it doesn't you actually have to go and wipe them all out um or hit the recent in all recent tasks whatever but um i don't do that on my iphone and my iphone camera still takes a quick picture so I don't want to try to, I know some people might say, well, you need to clear your RAM so it can respond quicker, which, you know, it might, that might be the case, but my point is I don't have to do that with my iPhone. I leave a bunch of windows open. I never clear out the RAM or whatever, and it still, the camera still responds very quickly, just as, as I expected to. So that's my thing. But, um, so those are the two big things that bother me with the camera. Other than that, I got some great pictures. Um, definitely outdoors and in well lit areas. And when I say well lit, I'm not saying like it has to be photo lighting, you know, extremely bright. As long as it's a pretty good lit area, the photos are going to come out pretty good. That's all I'm saying. So I still love my Note 4 camera. Just some things the iPhone 6 camera does better. So, the big question, would I go without my iPhone again? I would say yes, as long as I have my Samsung Galaxy Note 4. That's a big thing. If it was a different Android phone, I don't know. Probably not. But as long as I got my Samsung Galaxy Note 4, yeah, then yeah, I can probably go somewhere without it. Um, as of right now, since it's my only activated phone, every time I go out the house, I'm not taking my iPhone everywhere with me. Because um, my Note 4 does just fine for everything I need to do. And very well, for the most part, it's the best big Android phone in my opinion. Now, would I go out of town without my iPhone again or to like a, a big conference without my iPhone again? Um, I could, but I probably won't. I probably would definitely take my iPhone with me when it comes to going out of town or to a conference again. Uh, just because I want to make sure I can get all the shots that I want to get without any problems. Especially, like, when it comes to night shots. I prefer my iPhone. And I just I just want to make sure while I'm out of town or at a conference, I'm not missing any night shots or indoor shots 
to be in the best condition that they could because I'm not bringing my phone. You know, like, I probably could do all these things on my Galaxy Note 4 and get it to look, as you know, with the brightness and everything. But I would have to go into settings and, and play with the different adjusters. I'm talking about just strictly pulling out your camera, open up the camera and taking a picture and touching the focus and, you know, it getting it right on the spot without having to go into settings and adjusting the aperture and shutter and brightness and all that good stuff like that. So, I would, when it comes to going out of town, I would definitely take my iPhone again with me. Um, mainly because I want to make sure I get my night shots as they're some of my favorite shots to take and make sure I get my indoor shots just the way I want them to. Now, even though I'm a photographer by trade, I know I always like to carry my camera around with me because, um, most of the time it doesn't fit in my purse or say I'm out of town, we're just going to dinner. You know, I'm not trying to look around my camera, you know. I'm just not trying to do that. Um, you know, sometimes after dinner you might go do some sightseeing or just take some pictures and stuff at nighttime. You know, my camera, my phone, my phones on my camera. My cameras on my phones are good enough to get those pictures. Um, and I since I know how to work the settings to get in a good enough shot for the moment where I went, you know, feel absolutely sad that I don't have my camera on me. Um, you know, between my iPhone and my Note 4, like, I have good enough cameras that you know i can get a good enough picture because you know those cameras are competing with point and shoots and now i have a higher i have a higher end point and shoot when it comes to the power shot g15 so it's not going to be that quality but when it comes to a lower end point and shoots with my two phones i can make it look just as good as the lower end point and shoots without a problem um that's for sure but um Basically, what I just said is I will bring my iPhone on a trip with me, even if it's not activated, just so I can have a good camera, minus my real cameras, of course, to make sure I get the shots I want, just like I want, and as quickly as I want. This reminds me of an article that The Verge recently wrote titled, To Beat the iPhone, You Have to Beat the iPhone's Camera. And that's pretty much true. We're living in a world where people are using their phones to get their photos. You can go to a school, play, or a dance. You're going to see a lot of parents using their phones and tablets for some to uh, film their child instead of their cameras and why not when this camera is being put in these phones that can potentially look as good or close enough to a point and shoot camera and plus it's way more convenient i think that's why i snap so many pictures on my iphone it's just convenient i always have my phone nearby because it serves for so many other things but the camera and pictures on my phone are a huge part of it so for now i'm going to keep my iphone around even if i was to get rid of my iphone i probably would buy ipod touch to just have that feel of a quick easy camera that the ios provides well i guess i shouldn't say ios like android system doesn't provide the same with their stock camera on android 5.0 kitkat but um kitkat <laughs> 5.0 lollipop but the iphone does it better um and in my opinion samsung still rules when it comes to the screens though that's just my opinion i just love i've always loved amoled screens so for now I'll be keeping my iPhone 6 around for the camera, even though it's not activated and not currently being used that much. Plus, I'm waiting for the Apple Watch. As usual, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Tech Talk. Check back on the first and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, check out my new uh, series of videos called Tech in 60 Seconds. Uh, as I was speaking about earlier, I'm doing something a little different with those by offering tech news in a quick format. Um, Maybe prepping myself for a broadcast job. Who knows? I'm just trying to do something new and something different as content from the channel. So, just going to try those out. And um, I'm trying to do them daily for the most part. Except days I have my TikTok videos. But for the most part, you can expect to see those daily. So, go ahead and subscribe. I'll make sure I put those in this own little podcast if you just want to check out quick news stories or something like that. Until next time, later.